Did you get one? Drop it in there. All right, let's do the next one. Right here. You don't know how many you're going to have. Oh, oh, oh. How many you got? Three. Perfect. Okay, next one. Two, three. Good job. Oh, get them down in the hole. Poke them down in there. Use your finger and poke it down in the hole. Make sure there's no fire. Good. Next. Good. Next. working on a little project here today um, I shouldn't really say an experiment because I've done this before although not in this exact manner um, I have rooted tomato cuttings before um, in a in a hydroponics or an aquaponics sort of setup it worked really really well with the flood drain soil this medium so what I have today is a bunch of cuttings that I've pruned off of my tomato plants just because my tomato plants were so overgrown I had a video about that as far as how I was pruning them out and um, you know getting them getting them tied up on the trellis. So I have my cuttings. I have a bucket here that's got some uh, diluted root activator in it. I have no idea if the stuff works. I don't even remember what it's called. I bought this gallon of this stuff. <laughs> I bought this probably five years ago at least. Uh, Carl Pool Root Activator. I don't even remember why I bought it back then. But I have that. I've diluted it in a bucket of water, and I have a tractor bucket full of some of the most wonderful compost you've ever seen. Nice goat poo compost. Doesn't smell like goat poo. That's our compost from this year's uh, goat breeding and stuff. So that's cool. I'm using my own compost. Anyway, I've got a whole bunch of pots here that I've collected over the years um, that I've saved from planting fruit trees and whatnot. I have no idea how many cuttings I have, I didn't really count, but I'm going to start by doing two to three tomato cuttings per pot, um, just to see if they even root. If they actually do root up, then I may take them out of that pot in a couple of weeks and pop them into their own pot or just plant them into the garden. But this is really just to get them into a soil. Uh, you can see they're, they're a little wilty looking from being cut off and then they sat out in the sun more than I would have liked. I moved them over here into the shade as quick as I could, but just sitting out in the sun in the bucket while I was pruning, they got pretty wilty pretty quick. Anyway, let's get this set up. Let's uh, get to working on it and just see what we can do. Like I said, I have no idea if this is going to even work. Uh, it should. I'm going to set my camera here on the set. Look at that, so you guys can see. I know you guys always love to see me work. So what I'm going to do is get into the first bucket here. These things are so tangled in here it's hard to even figure out what's what. So I'm just going to pull a few out. I've already pruned the lower ends of the stems off. Um, which again, those of you that don't know, I mean tomatoes you can look, they've got all these little knobbies all over the stem. Those are all little roots that are already starting to start out. If a tomato vine lays over on the ground it will put roots down right away. So we're just going to take a bunch of these. And that's part of the, the nice thing of tomato plants because they root so easily um, in that manner. So we're going to take a bunch of them, make sure I've still got my pruners here. So if I do decide, I can I can lop off a little more if I want to. I mean, some of these already have blooms on them, which I imagine the stress of this effort will probably make them drop the blossoms. But it might not. But otherwise, you know, if you went to a retail nursery, and you bought a tomato plant that big in a pot, that sucker would be every bit of $10. It's crazy how expensive they are. So, there's a reason for this effort. I don't know if I'll sell them or not, probably not. But I'll offer them. 
I mean, the fact is, I was digging them up to prune them in, or not digging them up, but I was pruning them out anyway. So, you know what? If you can prune them out and you can get a little something out of them, great. If you get nothing for it, oh well. We're going to prune them anyway. So we're going to start with our soil here. I don't suppose I need that big board in there. <laughs> There's some random stuff in my compost. It gets picked up off the ground in the goat barn. I'm going to shake this over so that my compost is kind of on the side of the bucket. Try to get it laid down. And basically, I want to be able to lay these plants. I want to be able to lay them, you know, right in on top of that compost as deep as I can. You know, so if that means pruning off an extra branch or two, then so be it. You prune them off. But the more that stem you put in the ground, the more roots you get. Again, those of you that grow tomatoes or grew up growing tomatoes, you remember that. You bury them as deep as you possibly could. But just for grins, I find myself compelled to want to. You don't want to save them if they've got a blossom on just to see what it'll do. So we're going to take that one. It's going to be a little bit awkward. But we get one in there. I'm going to dirt around it. See if I can get another one or two in there. Number one. This is just, when they're this long of cutting, this is the easier way to, to dirt them up in the pot. It's to lay them in on the side like this. I might get four in here kind of layer them in, you know? Yeah, I'm going to get at least one more in here. There's a nice big one, too. And that last one you put in, you just drop him in there and then set your pot down and let everything kind of sand itself up. So once you sand them all up, then you can kind of pick out, you know, if you want to prune one off because it's set too low, this little blossom set down in there anyway. It's going to get buried in dirt. And so since that blossom is going to get buried, um, we'll leave the rest of it. See. So then once we've stood it up, we have a little bit more compost here. This compost is still kind of blocky. It's not quite perfect yet. All right. These are actually feeling really good already. They, they were looking wilty in the bucket, but standing them up, these feel really, really good. I think these were, I think these were some of the last ones I cut off, but they're looking a lot better, and I don't know that the sitting in this rooting hormone is really perking them up that fast. Maybe they just look better once you stand them up. I don't know. But we're going to just kind of untangle the leaves a little bit, and um, yeah, that's it. There's four in that bucket. I could easily put five in there. I mean, I could take these now if I wanted to and go out, you know, if they root, if they hold. Um, you know, if I wanted to go plant these in the garden, heck, I could plant all four of them right in one spot, you know, as long as your soil is rich enough, if you had a, a trellis to support it. But the biggest thing for right now is just get them in a pot, get them, you know, they're soaking in that rooting hormone, so they're, they're wet already. This compost is moist already, so they really probably don't need to be watered all that much. Um, the biggest thing is just to keep them out of the sun. I want them in indirect light. So I'm going to be lining them up right here along the edge of my sidewalk. This part of the sidewalk gets very little direct sunlight. Maybe, maybe first thing in the morning. But we're, uh, we're about 1 o'clock in the afternoon right now. And you can see where the shadow line is at from the house right there. So we set them right along that line. They're going to get really good light. Just not quite that sun just pounding on them. So let me get all the rest of them potted up here. And we'll see what we're left with in the end. So I found a nice little technique here that I figured I'd share. Assuming you guys have a setup like me, which I mean, you could do this in a wheelbarrow or whatever, but I basically just dug a little angled bed to set my pot in there. So instead of me trying to hold the pot, like I was showing you in the video and, or in the last video, instead of me trying to hold the pot and throw it all in sideways, the pot just lays here. I put me a little bed of dirt on the bottom, kind of round it out a little bit. You can lay in one plant, cover over it, lay in two plants, cover over them, lay in two more, cover over them, you get the point. So I'm not having to try to hold the pot um, and I can snatch plants and shove them in there pretty quick. So I just figured I'd show you a little solution that I came up with. Uh, but otherwise, getting busy. That bucket's done, that's them soaking, and that bucket has even more in it, I know. So I'm still cramming four to five per pot right now just to make sure everything gets enough. All right, so here's the finished effort 
for now anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pots. These all have, I think, at least five plants in them. These have all at least four. Maybe the last two have three. Um, but we'll just say average, average of four plants, so 44. Maybe I've got 50 in here. So we'll see what they do. Like I said, right now they look a little wilty, a little rough. These look really wilty. You know, no particular reason. Um, these right here are the last ones I just did. And they actually feel pretty firm. They feel pretty good. So, you know, it's hard to say. It's, it's definitely, definitely a shocking um, process that I've done to them here. Um, we'll just have to see. Like I said, the, the ideal situation would be, you know, cutting these things and throwing them, throwing them immediately into an intermittent mist system. Uh, soilless medium with fertigation or whatever, you know, get real fancy with it. Um, but, yeah, for right now, they're just going in a little bit of a root stimulator and a dirt pot. So we'll see what happens. Well, crapper. I forgot that this side of the house gets full sun in the evenings. <laughs> so, my tomato plants look a bit disheveled right now they're a bit wilty but honestly you know the stem down here is still good and firm so you know they may defoliate a little bit but you might be surprised they'll actually bounce back again this is not they may bounce back i won't say they will just yet but this is not the best way to do it by any means but certainly being able to have them out of direct sun would be better i just i don't think i have anywhere here that has indirect light all day long uh, without me having to run them back and forth to the front and the back of the house all day long. So I'm not going to do that. We're just going to have to see if they if they have enough life in them right now that they will push out some roots and, you know, start picking up nutrient again. Um, like I said, they'll probably, the tops will die back a lot, which is kind of a shame because, of course, they look, you know, big. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's a great big plant. And now it's a wilted, rotten mess. But it may still come back from the roots and still generate a, a decent little plant. So we'll just have to see. Um, yeah, I don't know where else I'd put them other than like putting them out in the shop and my wife's not going to stand for that so I'm not going to even do it. But yeah, oopsie. <clears throat> well, I just figured I'd give you guys a little update on the tomatoes. This is after um, about a week, I think, week and a half, maybe at most. Uh, <clears throat> and so I think I'd made the little video that, you know, I forgot about our afternoon sun and they were getting absolutely destroyed here in the afternoon. But still, here's the results that we've got. I've given them time to go through their shock and start to come back. Um, and we've just been, you know, getting a little bit, we've just been watering them once a day, just keep the soil moist. So not doing any sort of mist on them at all, not doing periodic watering, trying to keep them wet, just keeping the soil wet, letting them, re you know, come back. So you can see now the ones that have kind of firmed back up. So out of this pot, this one, oh, that's a branch off the same one. Let's see, out of one, two, this is the last pot I did, so it's got three. And it looks like all three of them are coming back because this one's coming back down here on a little sucker. It'll actually try to come back and start a whole new plant. So three out of three on that one. Nice. This one here, that one doesn't look like it made it. But that one's got a great big one. You know, one for two there. Here we've got one that's lost. It was a little scrawny thing anyway. One good one. That one, um, it might come back to something. This one here, let's see. That one looks like it's mostly dead. But anyway, at least one in there. This pot looks like it's all lost. Maybe this one's going to make it. Looks like it's trying. This pot, just got one coming back. This pot looks like none, but maybe this one's going to make it. It's firmed up. It's not wanting to stand up, but at least the leaves are the leaves are green and they've got some texture to them. They're not all wilty. Cool. Where did you get those? Um, um, those are so pretty. You need to take those to mommy. Those are so pretty, honey. I can't believe you just went. Oh, I see where you got them. Well, don't lose them now that you picked them. These, I think almost this whole pot. Almost, and there's like seven or eight of them in here. Shoot, some of them even held their fruit. You know, these these are not bloom and set since they've been transplanted. They actually held their fruit through the transplant. 
so yeah, these all look really, really great. We're going to leave them in the pots, you know, for another, I don't know, week. Just go ahead and let that, that root network that they've established now, let it go ahead and get real strong. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a risk, I guess, potentially of them, um, you know, the roots getting tangled. Uh, but basically at this point, if I just say I've got, let's just say I get one per pot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If I got one per pot, that's eleven more plants than I had. You know, yes, I know I cut and I don't remember if I ever counted when I did it, but it was like what, fifty or so we figured. Um, so, you know, these were, again, these were prunings, these were cuttings that I was going to throw away regardless. So, potted them up and I've got some really big tomato plants coming back out of them. You know, these just look <laughs> and this guy just looks amazing. There's going to be a heck of a plant here. So anyway, we'll uh, give them a little bit more time just to keep recovering and, you know, kind of establish their new growth. And then we'll take them out and we'll plant them into the garden and we'll put them in between the other plants. I've got a couple holes where a pepper plant died or, you know, a tomato plant died back. So we're going to put them in those holes for now. I, I don't know that I want to start another row of tomato plants just yet, but, you know, depending on on how many I think I have, I might set a few out on their own and, you know, train them up a T-post or something, but anywho, just want to show it to you guys. So, you know, this was without mist propagation um, or intermittent mist. This was without anything special. Just whacked them off the plant, stuck them in moist dirt, and watered them well. So very, very resilient plants, and uh, it's a great way to multiply your own plants if you need to in your garden.